I referred to many times in preaching. This passage was written by the Apostle Paul. To get into the New Testament, it's hard not to run into Paul since he wrote over half of it. So anyway, this passage was written by him, and it was written to the church at Philippi. This is the fourth chapter and the fourth verse. It says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Now, that sounds pretty definite to me. Doesn't seem like there's any ambiguity in that statement. Rejoice in the Lord always. Note that this isn't stating that we're to rejoice for all things. However, we are to rejoice in all things. In other words, while we're going through those things, we might not rejoice for them. We might not be happy they're there. But we are to rejoice while we're going through those things. Then Paul passed rewind and he said again, again I say rejoice. So let me read this without any commentary. Rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice. Verse 5, let your moderation be known unto all men. In other words, be satisfied with even less than you feel is your due. And he said, the Lord is at hand. This is referring to the second coming of the Lord being near. Hallelujah. Verse 6, be careful for nothing. Don't worry about anything, church. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, this speaks to our faith-filled prayers. And again, in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. In other words, pray with thanks for what God's done, pray with thanks for what God's doing, and pray with thanks for what God's going to do. And he said, let your requests be made known unto God. In other words, you can ask God for anything here. You can ask for the material, you can ask for the physical, you can ask for the spiritual. And when you do, verse 7 continues on with, and the peace of God which passeth all understanding, shall keep, it will protect your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. You might not see how God's peace could possibly come to your life. But the point here is it will come when you do it God's way, when you follow the Scripture. Verse 8, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, Whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. You know what that verse is telling us? It's saying, don't be a stirrer. Don't be somebody that's always communicating bad things. Again, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, those are the things you're supposed to communicate well. Whatsoever things are honest, won't, no, don't want any dishonesty. Whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, again, if there be any praise, get your mind on those things. Verse 9, those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. The point here is we've learned from the Scripture. You've been in this church for any length of time. You have learned from the scripture. You've learned from the preaching. You've learned from the teaching. You've learned from seeing God work in and through others in this place. We've received by way of forgiveness. We've received by the blood of Jesus Christ being applied to our lives through baptism in the name of Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. By way of the infilling of the Holy Spirit, we've heard about what God's done and is doing for others, and because of these things, God's peace should be in us. Amen? I want us to understand this, church. Paul see, saying, even while living in this old sin-sick world, rejoice. You might not feel like rejoicing over an unexpected bill. Over a leaky radiator. Somebody told me about a leaky radiator the other day. It's going to cost $400 to fix it. 
might not rejoice over a flat tire, over the neighbor from that hot spot, might not feel inclined to rejoice over someone figuratively stabbing you in the back, might not be able to rejoice over a thief, over a crook, over a loudmouth cashier. Anybody ever run into one of those? But here's one thing you can certainly rejoice about. You can rejoice in the Lord simply because you know that he saved you from a burning devil's hell, that he's been with you ever since he saved you. So rejoice and keep on rejoicing in him. Make a choice tonight to just go ahead and rejoice in your God. My subject tonight is in the form of a question, why we should rejoice why we should rejoice. Lord, talk to us tonight. Instruct us in righteousness. Do mighty things in our lives. Help us to grow. Help us to mature. Help us to be better for this service tonight than we were before we got here. In Jesus' precious name, everybody said amen. You may be seated. So I'm going to take my time here tonight and just see where this message takes us. There are many reasons God's people are to rejoice, even in this old sin-sick world where bad news abounds. It's hard to find any good news in this old world unless you look for it. It's almost like you got to be an explorer. My job today is I'm going to look for some good news. (laughs) Oh my goodness, I can't find it there. Well, I'm going to go over here. I can't find it there. I'm going to look for some good news in the newspaper. You're looking in the wrong place. I'm going to look for the good news on the radio. My goodness, you better start over. (laughs) You're in a world of hurt when you get to the radio. I'm going to look for some good news on my iPhone or my my Verizon phone or whatever phone I've got. There's no good news on there. (laughs) Well, I'll tell you where you can find some good news. Talking to the Lord getting in the Word of God, hallelujah, trying to talk to somebody about their salvation. I'll tell you what, there's a whole lot of good news found in the Lord Jesus Christ. So, why we should rejoice. Again, there's many reasons God's people have to rejoice. One reason is found in Joshua chapter 1 verse 9 where we find God saying in His people, Have not I commanded thee to be strong and of good courage? Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Friends, to know that God is with me always, even unto the end of the world, that ought to bring some rejoicing to my heart. Another reason is found in Isaiah 43, 1, But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. Of course, we are the Lord's by way of adoption today. And these scriptures, therefore, apply to our lives. Verse 2, When thou passest through the waters... I will be with thee, and through the rivers they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, and neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. Anybody glad tonight that you've got a Savior named Jesus Christ? (laughs) Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hallelujah. God told his people in Deuteronomy 31, 6, be strong. In other words, that's a choice. In other words, it's it's up to us whether we're going to be strong or weak in God. Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee nor forsake thee. The guy down the street may fail you. Hallelujah. The guy across the way, he may fail you. But I want you to know this. God will never, under any circumstances, fail his kids. 
he's going to be with us. You see, church family, often we get so caught up in the day. We get caught up in the week. We get caught up even in the year. And because we're caught up in this in this rut, if you will, maybe we're going through some testing times. Maybe we're going through some trying times. Maybe we're dealing with some situations that were unexpected. But we often get caught up in the day, the week, the year, and, and, and we find ourselves at times discouraged when if we'd only look at the whole of our lives and I speak about where we were before we came to God. And where we are now that we found God. If we'd understand God has never failed nor forsaken. If we'd understand that our God has been so very faithful to every single one of us. Then we could not help. But rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Hallelujah, David, a man after God's own heart, tells us in Psalm 37, 23, the steps of a good man, a godly man, are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. And then the psalmist said, I have been young And now am old, and yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. He is ever merciful. He lendeth, and his seed is blessed. I'm so proud to be a child of the king. I'm bona fide proud to be an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. One said, but Brother Sarton, you just don't understand. I'm, I'm having a really bad run in my life. Really? Are you really having a terrible run? Or is it that God's allowed you to end up there to help you to grow into a better model? Let's go back to a scripture that we referred to a week ago. We're not going to hang out here long, but I just want to remind you, Job lost everything that he had except his life. However, it wasn't because he was unfaithful. Really, it was to prove a point, not only to the devil, but to future generations. Guys and gals, if I can make it after what I've gone through, I promise you, or the little bitty things that you have to deal with, you can make it. Hallelujah. Losing all of his children, losing all of his money, losing all of his possessions, and and I'm telling you, sitting down with boils from head to toe and breaking an old piece of pottery and scraping away the infection, not a one of us has ever been close to that. So you say, well, man... Job, what are you crying about? I, I, I'm crying, but I'm, I'm not giving up. I'm still trusting God. I'm still loving God. I, I know that God is faithful. I'm here for a reason. He understood that he was there for a reason. Friends, if Job could make it out of the valley with far more than he had when he went into the valley, then we can too. Let me show you Job's attitude in the middle of his trial. He said in the 23rd chapter, 8th verse, Behold, I go forward. Anybody ever felt like this? I go forward, but he is not there. I go backward, but I cannot perceive him on the left hand where he doth work, but I cannot behold him. He hideth himself on the right hand that I cannot see him, but he knoweth the way that I take when he hath tried me. Friends, every one of us need to be able to say this. When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. I shall come forth as gold. Hallelujah. You say, Brother Sartre, I'm going through it. Well, hallelujah. God is still there whether you can see him or not. You look before you, you don't see him. You look to the right, you don't see him. You look to the left, you look behind, you don't see him. 
But I'm telling you, he's still there. He's still there. He's still there. And you might as well just go ahead and rejoice in the Lord. But I don't feel like rejoicing in the Lord. I'm not saying you get happy about bad things that are going on in your life. But you know that God is going to bring you through that situation. So you rejoice over what you know is coming when it's all said and done. I want each of us to know that God's got us. He's got us in the palm of his hand. Matthew 10, 29 tells us, Are not two sparrows sold for a farthing, and one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father, without him knowing? But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Hallelujah. For we guys that are losing our hair a few more and more every day, the Lord's got a tough job keeping up with us. But I'll tell you what, he's got even that covered. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. He says, fear ye not, ye are more value, of more value than many sparrows. So God's got us. God's got us. I wish somebody would say that with me. God's got us. God's got us. Hallelujah. I'm preaching tonight about why we, God's children, the sheep of his pasture, should rejoice in the Lord our God. Hallelujah. You say, well, again, I've got all of these worries. I've got all of these fears. I've got all of these doubts. I've got all of these frustrations. Again, God has you. Amen. I'm reminded about a little stitching. It wasn't a little stitching. It was a major stitching that, that David Klein's mother made for me some years back. I had remembered going to my grandparents' house when I was a little bitty old boy. And um, there was a little boy and a little girl, and they were walking across this old shaky bridge, and some of the slats were missing in the bridge. And behind them, there was an angel, a guardian angel, and she said, well, I want to do something for you, Reverend. So I said, that's what I want you to do. She said, I know exactly what you want me to do. So she went and got the pattern, and she brought out the cross stitching, and boy, it took her a while, but... I've got it in my office, and it's beautiful. And friends, I want you to know, if you're a child of the Almighty God, He's got you covered. He's got, he's got a guardian. I believe guardian angels are, are around each and every one of us that has been born of the water and of the Spirit. We can't see them, but, but I promise you they are there. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Friends, we need to learn how to rejoice over our God. We need, we need, instead of moaning and groaning all the time, we need to say, I praise you, Jesus. It don't take a bit more energy to say, I praise you, God. It don't take a bit more energy to say, I love you, God. You can say, oh, me, or you can say, wow, what a mighty God I serve. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I'm preaching tonight about why we, God's children, should rejoice in our God. How many times have so many people looked at the prosperity of the wicked and said, why am I not where they are? Perhaps it's because if we had all that we wanted, perhaps if we had it made in the shade, and didn't have to depend at all on the care of God, perhaps we'd grow so content in the temporal that we might even forget about the eternal. But we realize there's not one single thing in all this world, nothing that we can take with us when Jesus comes for his church. We can't bring gold can't bring any silver, can't bring any diamonds, any rubies with us. We can't bring houses, can't bring magnificent cars, can't bring beautiful suits of clothing, aren't even going to get a day's notice where God's telling us, cash in all of your CDs, get your retirement fund and 
your stocks, your bonds, and, and get it all liquid so that, so that you can stuff it in a suitcase. And when I come for you and give you a glorified body, you can grab hold of that suitcase and bring it with you. Money's worthless in heaven, boys and girls. Hallelujah. I said money is useless in heaven. That's this world's capital. Up there, hallelujah, once you get there, wow, wow, wow. Hallelujah. Paul in 1 Corinthians 2.9 said, But as it is written, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Anybody love the Lord? tonight do you really love the Lord tonight hallelujah not a I and I have seen I I mean you the Taj Mahal never been there but I've seen pictures of it man it's glorious been to Spain and saw that that church that they've been building on for a hundred years it it's the most magnificent building that I personally, especially as a church, have ever seen in my life. But nothing that man can build can compare to what heaven's going to be like. Again, I hath not seen, ear heard, neither it, as it entered even into the heart of man, the things that God hath prepared for us. Heaven is just simply indescribable. Now, John did make an effort at describing it. Found in Revelation 21.10, carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God, and her light was likened to a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. Had a wall great and high, twelve gates, at the gates twelve angels, names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. Come on, put your imagination, put your imagination, get, get it to moving a little bit here. On the east was three gates, on the north there were three gates, on the south there were three gates, and on the west there were three gates. The wall of the city had twelve foundations, and in them the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city, and the gates thereof, and the wall thereof. And the city lieth four square, and the length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with the reed, twelve thousand furlongs. The length and the breadth and the height of it are all equal. And he measured the wall thereof, 140 and four cubits, according to the measure of a man that is of the angel. The building of the wall of it was of jasper. The city was pure gold, like unto clear glass. The foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third chalcedony, the fourth an emerald, the fifth sardonyx, the sixth sardius, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth the topaz, the tenth chrysoprasus, the eleventh the jacinth, the twelfth an amethyst, and the twelve gates were twelve Pearls. Every several gate was of one pearl, and the street of the city was pure gold as if it were transparent glass. And I saw no temple there, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need of the sun, neither the moon to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. Friends, I can read this, but I promise you I can't see it the way he saw it. I promise you I can't imagine it the way he saw it on that day. But I want you to know God loves his children that's why that place has been built 
and it's waiting on us. And I believe it's not going to be very long where we're going to be walking on those streets of gold. Hallelujah. And viewing those walls of jasper. This is where we are going. My Lord, folks, I drove down a road yesterday that I was afraid once I got down into that pothole, I wasn't going to be able to get out of it. I said, my goodness, why didn't I buy a four-wheel drive? Now, I was in New Orleans, so you know what a quandary I was in. But finally, I was able to peek out over the lip, and somehow or another, I got back on the pavement, and I made it. I hit another one over in Chalmette, and Lord have mercy, it shook that poor car of mine. I said, Lord, I may have to go trade this puppy in. But I said, no, I ain't going to do that. Hallelujah. What I'm saying to you, friends, nothing that we've ever seen in this world can compare to what waits each and every one of us. And that's where we're going. He Allah, Hashaya. This is where we're going to end up if we've partaken of the gospel. What is the gospel? It's the death, it's the burial, it's the resurrection of Jesus Christ. When we repent, we partake of the death of the Christ. When we're baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, it's done for the remission of sins. Just like this little lady was baptized this morning for her remission of her sins, her sins are gone. <laughs> Hallelujah. God chooses to forget the past. It's over with. Hallelujah. So we repent. We're baptized in the name of Jesus. The blood of the Christ is applied to our lives. And then we receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. God comes into our lives and there's always a unique thing that happens when this occurs. We begin to speak with unknown tongues. We don't know what we're saying, but God knows what we're saying. He can converse multilingually. Hallelujah. And I'm thankful for that. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So this is where we're going. This is where we're going to end up one of these days. And yet I don't want to get too far ahead of myself because I still got a little bit of work to do down here. I still got some Bible studies to teach. I still got some souls to reach for. I don't want anybody to say, Brother Sarton, if, if you had just gave, given a little more energy to teaching those Bible studies, you'd have taught me one and I'd have been saved. No, 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 no. I want to bring as many people with me as I can. Hallelujah. And I'm going to tell you something else about Brother Mike Sarton. I enjoy teaching Bible stuff. Probably the most enjoyable thing that I do in every part of my life. Why? It's because I'm going after that one soul with the Lord's help, and they get to ask all the questions they want. And if I don't have the answer, I say, next week I'll have that answer for you. It's amazing how you can do that. Amen. Some people can come up with some doozies. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Hallelujah. That's where we're going. Hallelujah. We're going to that new Jerusalem. We're going to heaven. Hallelujah. You say, well, what about today? What about tomorrow? What about next week? What are we to do? I'll tell you what we're to do. Paul again said it like this. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, rejoice. What do I have to be happy over? Him. That's what I've got to be happy over. Him. He's worth it. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication and with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. One said, but how do I do it? How do I rejoice when I'm fighting the devil? When I have problems with this and with that, the answer is you have to take the whole prescription. Amen. you got to take the whole biblical prescription. Verse 8 continues on with, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. You don't need to be thinking about the gossip across the street. 
Don't need to be thinking about that old war horse down the road. You need to be thinking about, you need to be talking about, <laughs> thinking about these kind of things. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 9, those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. Woo! That ought to be your new favorite scripture right there. Hallelujah. Philippians chapter 4. Hallelujah. We just need to understand that from time to time, we're going to wake up and we're going to be on God's potter. I'm too old to be on that potter's wheel, Brother Sar. No, 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 no. Never get too old. But from time to time, you're going to wake up and you're going to be on that wheel. Simply because God's ever about the business of making us into better models. Amen. When you think about Ford, hallelujah. Some years back, they made a beautiful Mustang for the first time, and everybody wanted one. And today... They having to make stuff to, to just keep up with the Chevy. They got to make something to keep up with some the latest greatest car on the block. Hallelujah! I'm gonna tell you what God wants you to be the best that you can be in this old world, because there's somebody out there He wants you to reach for the kingdom, and unless He's got you on the wheel from time to time, you're not gonna be able to reach that person. Hallelujah. So we, from time to time, we'll end up on that wheel. There will be times when we're pulled first this way and then that. There will be times when life will deal us a bad hand by godly allowance. However, every day is another day of growth and learning. Every day is another day of becoming something better than I was the day before. Every day I'm maturing and being shined up and made more perfect for that faraway land that is coming. I'm preaching tonight about why we God's people should ever be about the business of rejoicing in our God. Hallelujah. Oh, my Lord, I'm just so sad today. Get to thinking about Jesus. Get to thinking about what he did for you when you repented, were baptized in Jesus' name, and filled with the Holy Ghost. You'll get glad all over again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at this old world and the people who march to the beat of this world's drum. Let me read about their destination. I've talked to you about heaven now. Let me read about what those that go against God have to deal with. Chapter 20, verse 10 of Revelation. The devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Somebody say, yay. Yay. Yeah, God. Go get them, God. Amen. They deserve everything they get. Amen. And in verse 11, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. There was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. The books were opened. Another book was opened, which is the book of life. The dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. The sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged, every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. I don't know about you, friend, but I choose heaven! I choose life. I choose an eternity of liberty and joy and peace. I choose to rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say to you, rejoice. Whew. I hear someone say, but how can you enjoy that old dull life of living for God? Mm. I've heard that before. People have asked me, have told me that before. That sure seems like a dull life, a boring life. Friends, knowing I'm on my way to heaven and that God guides me every single day of my life brings joy to me. Knowing that my kids and my grandkids are on the journey with me brings joy to my life. 
Knowing that I have a loyal and a faithful wife who loves God, I don't know how she does it, but she loves me too, (laughs) that brings great joy to me. It just does. Knowing that no matter what I've been through, God not one time has ever left me. Knowing I can turn to God at any time and hear him say, I am here. Knowing that no matter where I find myself, God's not going to allow more on me than I'm able to bear. This is a great joy to my life. Anybody hearing you, Pastor, tonight? We need to have right now a come-to-Jesus moment and begin rejoicing and keeping on rejoicing till we're walking down streets of gold and viewing walls of jasper. You say, well, Brother Sergeant, I had that come-to-Jesus moment a year ago, 10 years ago, 40 years ago. We need a fresh come-to-Jesus moment and understand that our God is an exciting God. Our God is a vibrant God. Our God is a God that brings life and not death, hope and not helplessness. Well, amen. One man said it like this, contentment is not the fulfillment of what you want, but the realization of how much you already have. I need you to think on that one a minute. I don't know how to say this name. I looked at it. I've, I've, I've spaced it out. Epictetus. 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 That's it. Epictetus. You ever heard of him? Had to be a Greek. He said, contentment consists not in great wealth, but in few wants. I, for one, am so honored to know my Savior. Mm. He's with me always, even till the end of the world. He will never leave nor forsake me. Therefore, I will rejoice in Him. And I will keep on rejoicing for all of eternity. Why don't you make up your mind to just have a rejoice fest with me about my God. He's worth it. Kids, he's worth it. You all look mighty tired tonight, but I'm telling you, God's worth it. Hallelujah. He's an awesome God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sister McDowell, you need to feed that young man some Wheaties, okay? He, it's a good young man right there. I'm telling you right now. Hallelujah. The Lord is with you, young people. Y'all need to be thankful for that. You serve a great, 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 great God. God is everything that you'll need to make it out of this world when he comes for his church. But you've got to value him. You've got to value him more than the cares of this world, more than temptations, and they're going to come. If you value him like you should, I promise you, you'll go with him when he comes for his church. I promise you that promise you that. Our text once again reads, rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing. Don't worry about anything but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God. It's okay to ask God for things. It's okay to ask but expect what you ask. Expect him to send it. He'll send, I'm going to tell you, God is so awesome. He does things that you don't even expect. I mean, it's like little things that will happen, and you'll say, my God, how did he know? Well, he's God. (laughs) How did he know that I was going to do such and such on such and such a day, and I was going to need this specific thing, and I only wanted to spend this much money for it, And I go to a place I never go to on Facebook, and boom, there it is, right across the river in Chalmette. I drive across there, get it, perfect fit for what 
I had just purchased. That's, that's, not, that's not just life. That's a God thing. That's a God thing. That is a God thing. That's how personal God is. That's how personal God is. He's that kind of God. Mm. Mm. Be careful of nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God which passeth all understanding. We don't know how in the world it's there, but it is. It'll keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And here's all the medicine one more time. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things, those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. Are you tired? Are you weary? Hallelujah. Just say, God, I need some rest. I need you to give me some rest. I need you to give me peace in my mind, God. Just speak those words, peace. Be still, God. Speak those words and all of the things that are going on in my life will just settle down. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, I've got this problem. Lord, I've got this physical ailment. Lord, I'm just asking you to, Lord, before I go to that doctor, because they're going to make me go back to that doctor, God, before I go back to that doctor, Lord, let it be gone completely. Just pray that prayer every day. Hallelujah. Matter of fact, call those things that be not as though they were. That's the way the Lord does it. We are heirs of God, joint heirs with Jesus Christ. We're not gods, but I'll tell you what we are. We're his children. So call those things that be not as though they were. Ah, all that fear you've got, hallelujah, just say, Lord, I'm going to think about the good things, and you're going to give me peace. I'm going to sing, I'm going to sing happy songs in the midnight hour. Y'all need to listen to my devotions this week. I think you'll enjoy them. I promise you. Anybody have any rejoicing in you? Let's all stand. Hallelujah. Yes. I love you. I love you, Jesus. Woo. I love you. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Mm. Mm. I love you, Jesus. 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 I love you, mighty God. I love you, I love you, I love you. Hallelujah, you are a friend that sticks closer than the nearest brother never failed nor forsaken. Lord, I am pleased that you care so much about me. Hallelujah. When you wake up tomorrow morning, you say to the Lord, thank you for waking me up, God. Thank you for giving me another day to praise you. Thank you for giving me another day to exalt you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You turn that car, front end of that car just in the nick of time and you don't smack into somebody, say, thank you, Lord. 
Now I don't have to put my car in the shop and wait six months to get it back and it still not be right. Oh, wait a minute, wait. That's that old man coming back. Lord, forgive me. Get that old man off my back, Lord. Hallelujah. Just find a reason to rejoice in your God, okay? Hallelujah. Why don't you just reach over and put your hand on your neighbor. Just play a little prayer for him right now. Just say a little prayer blessing. Come on, say that little prayer blessing right now. Yeah,